Right, hi guys. Um, so today I thought I'd do um, a bit of a Star Wars roundup video. Um, obviously we went through quite a stage of time where we didn't hear anything about Star Wars. And, you know, just recently there's been quite a few things that have come to light. So, so I thought I'd do a video just chatting about some of them things. So um, I've, I've made a few little notes because there's quite a bit to try and remember. So I've made a couple of little sort of like bullet points so that I know what I'm addressing. So so obviously, um, if you watched the season finale of The Mandalorian Season 2, obviously you will know that Luke Skywalker, the Luke Skywalker that we all grew up watching, returned at the end of the episode. Um of course, that was the Luke Skywalker we all expected to get in the Disney sequel trilogy, but unfortunately we didn't get that, did we? We got a miserable, downtrodden um, waste of space, really, when you look at it, in the sequel trilogy. And a lot of us felt really cheated, especially considering that the first film of that trilogy, you only saw him for like 30 seconds at the end of the film. So, so we all felt a bit cheated. And then, of course, by The Last Jedi, when we did see more of him, of course, he was downtrodden. He'd given up, telling everyone to go away all the time. A bitter old man, you know, and who turned his back on the Jedi. You know, not what any of us wanted to see from that character. Well, it would appear that, obviously, as we know, and I've said this many times on the channel before, John Favreau and Dave Filoni had different ideas. And... The reason for that is because they're Star Wars fans and they're the same as us guys. They understand Star Wars. They know what should be in Star Wars, how Star Wars works, and ultimately, as fans, what we want to see. Unlike the other side of Lucasfilm, which we'll address a little bit further on in this video, um, you know, who don't seem to want to do that. They're worried, of, they're, all they care about is their agendas, you know, their ideology and pushing that in people's faces and damaging the brand in the process. So, obviously, John Favreau and Dave Filoni had different ideas. And let's not forget, like I've said many times before, Dave Filoni, you know, he started doing the Clone Wars with George Lucas. So he's got a very good background and he's learned a lot from George. So he knows what George would have done. So, again, you know, this is why it worked out so well. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because, number one, if you haven't seen The Mandalorian Season 2 finale, go and watch it. This is the Luke Skywalker we should have got in the sequel trilogy. The other reason I'm saying go and watch it is because, if you're like the rest of us fans, we were all very excited to see it. When I watched it with Connor, and we mentioned this in a previous video, um... The minute I saw the X-Wing fly past, I knew it was Luke. And then, of course, it was confirmed as it went on. You saw the black glove, the lightsaber. Connor identified the lightsaber straight away. That's got to be Luke. That's his saber. And, of course, then he lights it up. It's green, you know. So, And there's the robes and the dark suit. All, exactly what he was wearing at the end of Return of the Jedi. So... You know, it was all done right and it was done in a way so that it just subtle hints as it went through and then eventually you saw it was him. And of course, we now know for sure, and I thought this at the time, that it was Mark Hamill and basically they just, you know, de-aged him. Um, so, and that was done quite well as well. I mean, you, know, you could tell it had been done, but it was very well done. It wasn't like it was with Rogue One with Tarkin and and uh, Princess Leia, you, you know, you could see really easily that they were, you know, CGI'd. You can still tell with this, but it was much better. It looked more realistic. So, and the reason I'm mentioning all this is because Mark Hamill loved it himself. He enjoyed doing it, and it obviously when it all came out, when we'd all seen it, he then said on Twitter that it was... An, it was surprisingly easy to keep it a secret for a year he expected someone to get hold of it it leak out or some sort of spoiler and it was a real challenge keeping it quiet for a year um and then of course when he realized all the different reactions from the fans it 
like a channel, for example, uh, Echo Base Network, they'd done a video on it and he retweeted their video, you know, and, and this is a thing, like, we got divided. The prequels divided us a little bit. The sequel trilogy definitely split the fandom. And this, just these few minutes at the end of this episode seem to bring everybody back together again. You, you're going to still have a few that don't like Luke and weren't happy about it. But the good majority of the fans were happy with what we got. And at the moment, it's pretty clear in the fandom that, you know, people are classing The Mandalorian as real Star Wars. And I've seen people tweeting it and Instagram and on YouTube. It's clear that that's what people want to see. And surely Disney must be seeing this too. So, you know, surely Kathleen Kennedy's days are numbered at this point, surely. But... It didn't change the fact, like we've seen in the past many times before, Disney don't seem to get it, do they? They, they, Or Lucasfilm don't seem to get it. They don't seem to get that the fans are what pays their wages, what keeps their lights on. No, they don't. They they seem to think that it's all right to bash their fans and call them things, you know, like isms and ists. Uh, They seem to think it's all right to take the mickey out of them. All things that are very unprofessional and shouldn't be done from a company of that of any size, to be honest, but definitely not this one. These people are paying your wages. They're keeping the lights on for you. Why would you start insulting your fans? Well, same people who have been churning out this rubbish are the ones that are doing it. And one of them idiots would be Pablo Hidalgo. Uh, Yeah, if you don't know who Pablo Hidalgo is, he's the high exec of the Lucasfilm story group. Now, number one, the reason I call him an idiot is because he's clearly not very good at his job, is he? Because if he's the head of the story group, then surely he should be making sure that we get good stories. So there's an X there because we haven't been getting that, have we? Surely he should be making sure that continuity is right. Well, there's an X there because we haven't been getting that either, have we? Um... And then there's an X just because of the fact that he thinks it's okay to attack fans. And this isn't the first time he's done it. So, and the incident I'm talking about in particular happened over the last few weeks when The Mandalorian aired. A channel called Star Wars Theory did a live reaction video. And basically got quite emotional when Luke appeared at the end. Now, a lot of us, you know, you either got excited or emotional or whatever... I mean, I remember me and Connor watching it. We were sitting there ecstatic because finally we was getting what we wanted to see in the sequel trilogy. So there was a reaction from everybody. Some sort of emotional reaction would have come from everyone. But because Star Star Wars Fury got emotional and started crying, Pablo Hidalgo thought it would be all right to go on to Twitter and just insult the guy. Now, what I don't understand here is, is that Star Wars Fury has been... He is the biggest Star Wars YouTube channel on here. Full stop. He's also been one of their biggest supporters, even at times when he probably shouldn't have been supporting what they were doing because what they were doing to the fans was terrible. But nonetheless, he he still supported them. So then Pablo Pablo Hidalgo attacks him. Really? (laughs) Why would you do that? (laughs) <laughs> this guy has only been saying great things about you, even at times when he shouldn't have done. And you then attack him. So, and they've now poked the beast because obviously he come out on his channel and he, he had his say on what he thought. And same as what I'm saying, he thought it was unprofessional. And he's right, it is unprofessional. You know, th- this guy should not be allowed to do this. I mean, he's dragging that company through the mud. So, so you had all of this where... Luke's reveal brings all the fans together and then that idiot goes and does that. Why did you do that, Pablo? Like, your company has just got the first bit of praise it's had for a long time. You've been given the golden goose after the Luke. Your company's on the up. Everybody's happy at that point with Star Wars. What's finally come round of Luke Skywalker, everyone was happy. And then this idiot goes and insults Star Wars theory, and now all the fandoms turned on him. You know, why would you do this? And why would you allow this guy who works for you to do this? You just struck gold with the fans, and then this idiot's gone and done this. 
it's, it's madness, madness. And I, I don't understand why this guy's working here, how this guy's working here. If if it was me and I was Bob Iger, I'd be getting rid of this guy because he's doing you no favours. And like I said, he hasn't done this just once. He's done this before. The guy's a moron and he's been doing it for a while now. So anyway, we move on. Because speaking of morons, the High Republic. Right, so as you probably already know, there was a trailer that came out for the High Republic. And the reason why this segues from Pablo Hidalgo is because he's one of them that's behind this. Um, and as we know, the trailer come out, it was a terrible trailer, I've seen it, the narrator on it, you know, I, I, I don't believe, you know, you know, when someone does a trailer, the narration, you're meant to be invested, the person reading or whatever she's doing, doesn't sound invested herself, so why would I feel invested, and it's a terrible trailer, to be honest, you can tell from the trailer what's going on here, it's Kathleen Kennedy's ideology again, you know, all this uh, feminist movement, this woke movement, it's, it's clear, you can tell throughout the trailer, there's threads of it all the way through it. So there's that issue. And then obviously there's the lacklustre reception from the fans. Most of the fans are not interested. None of us are really interested. You know, we're interested in the Mandalorian. We don't care about that. So, and that kind of leads into a point in a minute, but we'll get to that. One of the things that I found this trailer that really bugged me was the, um, there's a line where she says, um, the fate of the galaxy, you know, we weren't trained for this, control of the force, something along them lines. But I do remember hearing control of the force itself. That's what the battle's over. Well, that doesn't sound very fitting for a Jedi because Jedis have never come across as people who think they control the force. They're not in control of the Force, are they? It's it's a partnership. And in fact, at times in the films, you know this is the case. You hear various characters talk about it in the way that, it, you know, they, they work together. The Jedi, the Force, they don't tell the Force what to do. They work together. It's clear that this is a thing. It's like a partnership. So when you hear the lines fight over the control of the force itself. Well, that doesn't sound very fitting of a Jedi, but of course, why are we surprised? It's Pablo Hidalgo and his story group. And, you know, they don't do their own work. They don't know what they're doing. They don't care either. If they did care, they wouldn't insult people like they do. So, you know, there's reasons why this sounds rubbish and is rubbish. So, and this is what leads, leads me into the next part. When I said about, um, you know, the, the fact that they are not happy or, you know, fans aren't happy and not interested. Well, that gets to the next part. Clearly a divide at Lucasfilm. Leaks suggest the writer from Doctor Strange 2, Michael Waldron, is working on a new Star Wars movie directed by Kevin Feige. So, so we now know that, Kev, well, I say this, I'll get to another bit later on, but... At the point that I was writing this out, there was a leak, or supposed leak, so it is a rumour, it hasn't been confirmed, that um, Kevin Feige is doing a Star Wars film. Now, we heard this a long time ago, that he was apparently signed on to do one. And we, we've now been told that the Doctor Strange 2, Michael Waldron writer for Doctor Strange 2, is writing for this film. But like I say, it is a rumour, it hasn't been confirmed. So, and then as we move on, We've got more leaks. Further leaks say Lucasfilm's story group were not told about Luke's return in The Mandalorian. So it's been leaked, again, another rumour that the story group were not told about Luke's return and that they're not happy about it. Uh, the reason they're not happy about it was because they feel that it's pulled the rug out from underneath the High Republic storyline, whatever you want to call it. Uh, leak, leak was possibly done to knock the High Republic down a peg or two and put Kathleen Kennedy in her place. That's basically what, what it looks like. It looks like John Favreau and Dave Filoni did this on purpose. It seems like they've done it to kind of put the finger up to Kathleen Kennedy and Pablo Hidalgo and the rest of them minions. Um, they, you know, it, like I say, it's only a rumour. We don't know for sure. But it seems that there is a massive divide there. And 
it could be strategic what they did. It could be that they did this on purpose just to say, look, we're doing real Star Wars. Watch this. Pay no attention to this rubbish over here. It does seem like that's what's going on. And the fact that they wasn't told, I mean, that tells you a lot because Kathleen Kennedy, it looks like she wasn't informed. Like I say, we don't have proof that this is a thing. It is only a rumour. So it might not be true at all. But if it is true, and she wasn't informed, well, that would definitely suggest that, you know, she's on her way out the door, maybe. Of course, we've heard rumours of this many times already. Let's see. A contract does end this year. So hopefully, she'll be gone. But yeah, apparently they're not too happy in the story group. Do you know what? I'm glad they're not happy. Because what they're churning out is rubbish. More of the Mandalorian. More of that, please. And, and it does look like, slowly but surely, Dave Filoni and John Favreau are getting their feet further and further under the table. And rightfully so. They're, they're doing good work. Why shouldn't they? You know, so long may it continue. So, I've then put down, does this now mean that the Marvel guys are now in charge? Well, it could be a thing, couldn't it? I mean, let's be honest. Marvel's doing very well. And they've been doing very well for a long time. They're the biggest property for Disney at the moment. And their formula has worked time and time again. And you've already brought John Favreau over, who worked on Marvel. Of course, we've had rumours that Kevin Feige's going to do a film. Another Marvel guy. And if it's true about Michael Waldron, the writer for Doctor Strange 2, well, he's another Marvel guy. Why wouldn't you bring some of your Marvel guys that have been working on the most successful property in Disney at the moment over to Star Wars, Star Wars that, let's not forget, up until The Mandalorian was failing miserably. So it would stand to reason, it would make sense that Disney would be doing this. You know, you've got one IP doing really well, pull some of them over, help with the one that isn't. So it could be a thing. Again, we don't know for sure, but like I say, a lot of YouTubers, Overlord DVD, Geeks and Gamers, and various others, Echo Base, they all are saying that they, there seems to be a divide. And I'd agree. On the outside looking in, it does look like there's a divide. One side's not talking to the other. There's got to be something going on here. Personally, if it was me and I was Bob Iger and I wasn't sure on a decision, the way you make that decision on who you're putting where, get them to both work on projects, see which one works, see which one don't. The one that works, give them more power. The ones that don't, get rid of or give them less. It's the best way to make your decision, isn't it? Your fans will tell you what they like. Let the fans do the work. And we are telling you guys, we are telling you, Disney Plus, come on, you must know that more people have watched that last episode of The Mandalorian than the sequel trilogy on Disney Plus, surely. So they know, they know, they're not stupid. They're going to have the analytics for this. They're going to know what people are watching. So... You know, surely they must realise that John Favreau, Dave Filoni are nailing it and Pablo Hidalgo and all them guys are not. Surely it must be showing to them. Let's hope that common sense rules on this one. So, next part. Lucasfilm Games. Now, this has only just come out in the last couple of days. So, Lucasfilm um, have announced that there will be a new game studio for them called Lucasfilm Games. Now, a lot of people have gone up in arms a bit about this. Oh, it was called LucasArts and all that sort of stuff. But actually, and I've, I've watched another YouTuber that actually confirmed this, uh, Echo Base Network turned around and said, well, actually, back in the 80s, it was actually called Lucasfilm Games. So actually, this is a name that they have used before. LucasArts come around later. You know, it's all part of the same thing, isn't it? But... A name change did come. And Disney have gone with Lucasfilm Games again. So, And they are going to be working with other um, licensees. Or licenses, whatever you call them. They're going to be working with other companies. Possibly EA. Let's hope not though. No. I don't like what they've done so far. But, you know, they, it's obvious that they're going to have more of a studio. It's, this is the thing. The studio never went away. They did have a studio. But... Uh, in a lesser form and again i know this because echo base network have done a invest kind of like an investigatory video 
Um, they give a few hints away the other day, but apparently they've got a, a full-on video about this. They've done a deep dive into it, and that one hasn't hasn't been put out yet, so we haven't seen that. But they did say on one before, when they were discussing what was coming, they said that, you know, the studio was never completely cancelled. It was just made smaller. So, so yeah, so interesting that. If you haven't watched Echo Base Network, go over and check them guys out. They are really good. You do get some good information from them, and they are fun, and they're nice guys to watch as well. They done a stream the other day with Geeks and Gamers, Star Wars Theory, uh, Nerd Rotic, Star Wars Girl, and several others, and that was really good. It was about six and a half hours long in total. So you'd have to watch it over uh, several days, I would have thought, but it was a good stream. I, I've, I've watched some of it. It was really good what I saw of it. So, Right, so the last bit of news, which come out literally in the last day or so, is that Kevin Feige has apparently come out and said, no, I'm not doing a Star Wars movie. Again, I don't know if that's confirmed or whether it's just a rumour, but there have been a few little things cropping up. So so he's saying, no, I'm not doing a movie. So who knows at this point? It's all rumours and speculation, isn't it? So it could turn out that a few of these things aren't true. But one thing we do know that is true is that the High Republic's rubbish. Luke coming back was a success. Mark Hamill was happy with it. And pa Pablo Hidalgo's an idiot. So that's all we can take from that at the end of that. So yeah, um, like I say, some of these things have been coming out over the last few weeks. I just thought I'd do a nice little roundup video because we've been doing other things with the channel and we haven't really done anything Star Wars for a while. So I thought, well, let's do a roundup video of some of the stuff that's coming out. So, right. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. And also hit that notification bell so that you're made aware of all our future videos and live streams. And until next time, take care, stay safe, Nerdy Geezer out.